Welcome to Elite Medical Prep's five minute question review. My name is Ken Rubin, and today we are going to go through a rapid high yield review of a USMLE Step 1 question. Some of the discussion will also be useful for those of you preparing for Step 2 and Step 3. Time is precious, so let's get to our question. Here's the question. I'll read it to you. During a regular visit with his primary care doctor, a 78-year-old man is found to have elevated creatinine. On exam, he has afebrile with BP 145 over 95 and a heart rate of 80 beats per minute. Ultrasound of the kidneys demonstrates moderate hydronephrosis and ureter dilation bilaterally. The doctor decides to treat the patient's blood pressure with a drug that may also address the underlying cause of his kidney dysfunction, which is the most likely drug chosen. Please note that this vignette is part of a two-part question. The second part will come shortly. Let's take a closer look at our question. As you can see, I've highlighted a couple of keywords in the vignette. Hydronephrosis, bilaterally, and blood pressure. We know that the patient has hypertension with a blood pressure of 145 over 95. Now, scanning our answer choices, we can see that most of the drugs listed are commonly used antihypertensives, including diuretics and drugs of other mechanisms and classes. What we need to understand is that um, in this case, our patient has bilateral hydronephrosis and what causes that? That is our question. So let's take a closer look. Hydronephrosis and hydroureter are basically dilation of the ureter and kidney. They're simply a reflection of basic physics. Whenever there's an obstruction in the urinary tract, everything upstream of the obstruction will be dilated and eventually damaged, while everything downstream will have a lower pressure. We can use ultrasound and take a look at the kidneys to see if an obstruction is present that is reflecting the pressure retrograde into the kidneys. Most often, we think of the cause of hydronephrosis as a stone, which most commonly gets stuck in the ureter. Obstructing stones are almost always unilateral, affecting only one kidney. This is an important point. Bilaterally obstructing stones at the same time is extremely rare and therefore unlikely to be tested on the USMLE. We need to think of a single point in the urinary tract where a single lesion can affect both sides. Now, the point where obstruction can affect both ureters and kidney at the same time is the urethra, which in males is almost always due to the prostate. An enlarged prostate progressively blocks urine flow and if not addressed, can progressively dilate and damage the kidneys by pressure atrophy, also leading to signs of renal insufficiency, the most common of which is a high creatinine. And we always are looking out for creatinine clinically. So we recognize that our patient has BPH. That's the diagnosis. Great. But as stated at the beginning, we also need to treat his high blood pressure. Hypertension is a silent killer, and everyone knows it has numerous negative effects throughout the body. Let's recall that the definition of hypertension is 140 over 90 or greater. We have numerous treatment options for his hypertension, some of which have desirable and undesirable effects. We need the treatment option that will also address BPH. Now, which choice is that? Well, it's terazosin, choice D. That is the drug that treats BPH and hypertension, and that sort of synergy is important clinically and also for the USMLE. The first part of their question was straightforward, but the USMLE rarely makes the question so easy. Here's part two. It asks, what is the molecular mechanism or second messenger system by which the drug in part one exerts its effects, also with muscle? More specifically, um, we remember that terazosin treats BPH and hypertension. What is the mechanism of terazosin? alpha-1 blockade. It blocks alpha-1 receptors found on smooth muscle and blood vessels. For alpha-1 receptors, the second messenger system is the GQ protein that involves phospholipase, cleaving membranes to give us IP3, and diacylglycerol DAG. IP3 results in downstream release of intracellular calcium stores and activates protein kinase C, leading to a host of important intracellular changes. Calcium is tightly regulated in the cell, and any small changes can have important effects on multiple functions. 
Because teresosin is blocking the alpha-1 receptor, there will be a concomitant decrease in the levels of IP3. Hence, the answer to our question here is B. So we've successfully answered both parts of our two-part question. However, the key to great U.S. assembly preparation is learning all the angles of high yield questions, such as the ones listed on the slide. And we'll let you peruse these on your own. Our discussion today was limited, but these questions are worth exploring and are essential to being prepared for your step one. I want to thank you for watching this five-minute question review from Elite Medical Prep. Elite Medical Prep combines excellence in medicine with excellence in teaching to create elite test preparation. More information about our services can be found at our website at www.elitemedicalprep.com.